latest drama, the memorable story of the great among us, written by you, the people. This chapter, Man Against the Sea. The story of Kurt Carlson, skipper of the Flying Enterprise. January 1952. In New York City, a ticker tape parade for a hero of the sea. Captain Kurt Carlson's great fight to save his ship, the Flying Enterprise, had thrilled the world. Now the young skipper showed that he was as modest as he was brave. I wish to use this opportunity, and also if it was possible, to share the city's welcome to a lot of people, a lot of gallant people. I think that they serve a lot more credit than I do. Like the passengers of the Flying Enterprise, who obeyed my almost inhuman order to jump into an angry sea. Those were women and small children. We had to do it, and they did it without hesitation and without fuss. Kurt Carlson was born in 1915 near Copenhagen, Denmark, and raised within sight of the ancient castle of Elsinore. Growing up at the Copenhagen waterfront, he was familiar with the sea from earliest childhood. Becoming a sailor when he was 15 years old, Carlson served his apprenticehood on square riggers. One lesson of seamanship he never forgot. No matter how grave the danger, a captain never abandons his ship while there is any chance of its survival. Preparing for his own command, he crossed the ocean 10 times in sailing vessels. A full-fledged captain by the time of the Second World War, Carlson sailed in Allied merchant ship convoys. It was duty that called for strong nerves. German submarines prowled the convoy routes, hunting for their prey. The Battle of the Atlantic, war to the death with no mercy asked or given. Carlson saw many ships go down during those tragic years, but he went through the war unhurt. The Statue of Liberty during those years had come to symbolize all the good things of life for Kurt Carlson, so he and his family became American citizens. An unassuming man, he attracted little attention to himself. With the return of peace, he sailed for an American shipping company and neither expected fame or wanted it. Then came December 1951 and the worst Atlantic storm in 25 years. Into the teeth of the storm sailed Captain Kurt Carlson and the Flying Enterprise with a cargo worth two and a half million dollars. Battered by huge waves, the ship's deck cracked open. a mountainous wave almost broke the vessel in two. SOS, the international distress call. It flashed to the storm-wracked land. Picked up by radio antennas, the call for help was transmitted to vessels in the vicinity of the Flying Enterprise. Ship disabled proceed at once to assistance of passengers and crew. Rescue at sea. When the rescue ships arrived, Carlson ordered his passengers and crew to leap into the ocean where they were picked up by small boats. Carlson could have gone with them to safety, but true to the traditions of his calling, he remained on the flying enterprise. Reaching the United States, the survivors told the story of the heroic skipper's decision to stay alone on his ship, hoping that somehow he would be able to bring her to port. One of the passengers, the first to leap into the ocean, told of her last moments with Carlson. He shook hands with me and 
wished me good luck. And then I asked him uh, if I could do anything for him if I came to the States, if I should call up his wife. And he said yes. Uh, he, I should uh, give, my, uh, give his love to her. And then I had to jump. Meanwhile, at Carlson's home in New Jersey, fear grew with every passing hour. The only link between him and his wife and children was the radio. Would the flying enterprise ride out the storm? They could only hope and wait. Several days had passed since Kurt Carlson said goodbye to his passengers and crew and began his lonely, dangerous vigil on his storm-battered ship. A United States destroyer sped toward the scene. Her task? To stand by the flying Enterprise and rescue the intrepid skipper if his ship went down. Reaching the freighter, the destroyer men learned that what Carlson needed most was food. By canister, it was fired across to the cold, hungry man on the Enterprise. The tugboat turmoil set out from Falmouth, England, racing time and the storm in an effort to tow the flying Enterprise into port. By now, the entire world was aware of Kurt Carlson's gallantry. Millions prayed for the success of the tugboat's mission. The flying Enterprise was listing perilously when the tug arrived. Still, Carlson clung to his ship, explaining simply that it was his duty to the owners. He was joined by Kenneth Dancy, mate of the turmoil, and the tug began the long haul to England. The world breathed a sigh of relief, expecting a happy ending to Carlson's brave story. Then another fierce storm. The tugboat men worked feverishly to secure the tow line, but the storm was too heavy. The line snapped, and the flying Enterprise rolled helplessly in the sea. To Carlson's home in New Jersey went the bad news. Mrs. Carlson had been timidly optimistic when the towing began. In this latest misfortune, she showed courage almost equal to her husband's. We are trying to be as brave as he is. This is very hard. We've been hoping and praying. And I know a lot of people with us. I'd like to thank them all. Back on the flying Enterprise, the drama rushed swiftly to a climax. The ship listed almost flat on her side. Carlson and Dancy could only get about by crawling on hands and knees. And once Carlson had narrowly escaped falling overboard. After days of exposure to the winter storm, the men were at the point of exhaustion. And the flying Enterprise couldn't remain afloat much longer. The end came two weeks after Carlson began his ordeal. Leaping into the ocean, he and Dancy were taken aboard the turmoil. From the tug, Carlson watched his stricken ship. Her last bitter hour had come. Flat on her side, she could no longer withstand the ocean. Water poured into the hold. The precious cargo that Carlson had risked and suffered so much to save now drifted on the waves. Like a great beast that had received its death wound, the flying Enterprise heaved over and began to sink. Farewell to a brave ship. She went down slowly, ending a great sea drama. From the turmoil, her skipper waved goodbye. But for Carlson, the arrival in England began a new chapter. His parents had come from Denmark to meet him. Cheered by huge crowds, the hero was asked what he intended to do next. He replied, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Carlson got little sleep in England. His stay there was a continuous round of honors. 
It was the same on his return to the United States. He was a new kind of hero, refusing hundreds of thousands of dollars for the publication rights to his story. Carlson said he'd done nothing to deserve it. He even insisted on paying his own hotel bill. After an enormous ticker tape parade in New York, a roaring reception in Carlson's hometown. The crowd loved him, as much for his modesty as for his courage. Cheers and honors had failed to shake his down-to-earth simplicity. More praise and acclaim. At a great dinner in his honor, the skipper of the Enterprise was congratulated by the then President of the United States, Harry S. Truman. Carlson responded with a kind of statement for which he had become famous. My little hardship out there was actually a privilege to me because I was merely trying to protect a little piece of United States under the American flag. Thank you. Tiring quickly of speech-making and praise, Kurt Carlson went back to the sea. His new ship, the second flying enterprise. The vessel displayed a proud captain's flag, for the name of Carlson had become forever symbolic of modesty, devotion to duty, and highest courage. us again next week at this time when the greatest drama, true film biographies of the great among us, again comes your way.